There are a lot of people out there making a ton of different claims about what will help prevent or reverse skin aging. But unfortunately, since most of them are trying to sell you something, a lot of the information out there is BS. But today I am going over scientific studies on what strategies and ingredients have actually been shown by research to have anti-aging effects on your skin. Hey there, I'm Mish and I am a full-time research scientist with my PhD, and by day I conduct and publish studies of my own, whereas by night I share the results of other studies here to help you reach your weight loss, fitness, health, and nutrition goals. I recently revamped my extremely minimal skincare routine to actually include some anti-aging stuff because it's about time, and I did a bunch of research in that process, so I thought I would share what I found with you all. And in this video, I will mostly be focusing on skincare ingredients, but I'm also gonna talk about the kinds of procedures people get briefly, and then I will talk about collagen supplements and dietary collagen in terms of if that might be able to affect your skin at all. And before I get into it, I imagine almost all of you know this, but I just want to say up front, sunscreen is very important and is one of the most important things you can do to prevent skin aging. It won't reverse anything, but it will stop the sun damage because getting sun exposure damages your DNA, which causes your skin to age faster, causes more wrinkles, discoloration. And on that note, if you are interested in a whole video on sunscreen, for example, mineral versus chemical, and which one might be safer or better, then let me know in the comments below because I am pretty interested in that and I've done some research, but it would be fun to do a full deep dive for an episode here. So let me know. So now on to different skincare ingredients. Generally, there are three main categories of ingredients that have been strongly shown to prevent or even reverse skin aging. And the first category is antioxidants. And this includes primarily vitamin C, vitamin B3, AKA niacinamide, as well as vitamin E. And the most effective of these are vitamin C and niacinamide. But interestingly, it seems like vitamin C works better when it's also combined with vitamin E. And these different antioxidants are very helpful in preventing and reversing signs of aging in your skin for a few different reasons. So first, they help prevent the DNA damage that is caused by getting sun exposure. Now this is different from sunscreen. It's not actually gonna block the rays, but it helps to stop some of those negative effects of the times that you do get hit by the rays or you forgot your sunscreen or whatnot. And then also, perhaps more importantly, these antioxidants, especially vitamin C and niacinamide, also actually cause your skin to produce more collagen. And this is important because as we age, our skin loses collagen, and that's one of the main reasons we start to get sagging and wrinkles and all the negative effects of aging on our skin. So finding ways to cause collagen synthesis to increase in our skin, I keep wanting to say the word induce, but I'm trying to get less sciencey. so if you see me pause, it's because I'm like translating in my head from induce synthesis <laughs> to cause it to make more of. Anyways, point is antioxidants are good for preventing and reversing signs of aging in your skin. And important note, these vitamins are not gonna be the same in terms of how they are formulated as the ones you're gonna find in a vitamin. So do not try rubbing vitamins on your face by a product that actually has these different ingredients in it or one of them. And an important note for vitamin C is that it's pretty unstable. So it breaks down pretty quickly, especially when it gets exposed to heat. So products that have vitamin C are going to have quite a short shelf life. And you can extend that shelf life by putting those products in the fridge. And one trick to tell if your vitamin C moisturizer or whatever kind of product you have is starting to go bad is if it started as a white cream and it starts to become a yellow cream or it's starting to yellow, that will tell you that it is starting to break down. And just to add on to this category, another newer player here is green tea polyphenols. So skincare products advertising green tea might also be helpful for preventing and maybe reversing signs of aging. So our first big category was antioxidants, and now on to our second big category, which is vitamin A, like retinol, as well as vitamin A derivatives, like tretinoin. And these help reverse signs of aging by causing faster cell turnover in your skin, as well as causing you to produce more collagen in your skin. And in addition to reducing signs of sun damage and actually undoing your more minor wrinkles, both retinol and tretinoin are also used as acne treatments. So it's kind of a win-win if you're trying to do anti-aging and anti-acne at the same time, if you are in the same unfortunate boat that I was in for a long time. And one thing I wanna make sure you're aware of is that this category of vitamin A, retinol, tretinoin, all that is way more intense and way more likely to cause side effects than anything in the antioxidant category. So things like retinol and tretinoin can cause some really gnarly side effects. They can make you red and puffy and pain and burning and like peeling and craziness. So definitely, 
If you have sensitive skin or just in general, proceed with caution, start with very low concentrations. If you have a dermatologist, definitely worth talking to them first and maybe even getting a prescription since they can prescribe the stronger ones, if that's what you're interested in. But even more importantly, if you choose to use anything in this category, then you need to wear sunscreen pretty much every day, even if you're just sitting by a window, because what these products do to you is they make your skin way more sensitive to sun damage because they're causing this higher cell turnover, which is good for signs of aging, but could backfire if you get more sun damage because then it'll really damage your skin. So be sure to wear sunscreen if you are using retinol or tretinoin or anything in that category. I personally have not added these to my skincare routine. I am using antioxidants right now because it's summer and I go outside a lot and I just can't keep up all the time on sunscreen. Like I'll wear hats and only go out in the morning and evening generally, but I'm not messing with that. So in the winter, I'll probably try some retinol. Maybe we'll see. And if you're interested in these, I will link a Healthline article below that has some more information on them. Healthline is my favorite of the different medical pop science-y type sites. And our last category before we talk about different procedures as well as collagen is peptides. So there is some emerging evidence that different types of peptides applied to your skin can help with signs of aging and causing you to make more collagen, but it's not super well established yet. And I imagine a lot of the skincare companies are not yet sure which peptide is going to be best because there isn't really strong science on that yet. So if you have a product that advertises peptides, there's a chance it'll help, but there's a chance it won't. So now for different procedures, things like chemical peels and laser treatments and fillers like hyaluronic acid and all that don't have a lot of strong evidence. It does seem like they help in the short term, but the long-term effects aren't really well established. And personally, I don't think I'd mess with them, but that is up to your own choice. And there just isn't much strong science I can provide to guide you either way on whether it's a good idea. So personal choice. And now Botox. I just want to clear up some misconceptions about what exactly Botox is and what it does. So it doesn't actually help with reversing any deep wrinkles you have. What it does is actually paralyzes your muscles so you don't make expressions in that area. And by not being able to move your muscles, you can't produce wrinkles. So it stops the formation of new wrinkles and will help any fine lines settle down because you're no longer making the expressions that are causing them to stick around. But this is accomplished by injecting you with a toxin that has killed a lot of people historically due to improperly preserved food by paralyzing them. And so I just, yeah, you're injecting yourself with a toxin, but it does seem to help. It only lasts three to six months and usually isn't dangerous. It does have potential side effects and risks and whatnot, but yeah, proceed with caution or at least knowledge. And if that's something you do, no judgment. I just, it makes me nervous <laughs> to inject myself with a toxin. Seems like the risks aren't too much, but I would definitely educate yourself on them before choosing to get any of these procedures. And now what I imagine a lot of you have been waiting for, collagen supplements or dietary collagen. Like you'll see the big tubs of collagen powder that people put in smoothies or the pills. And the logic that people have is that because one of the bad things that aging and sun damage does to our skin is the breakdown of collagen in our skin. Well, therefore, if we eat more collagen, that should put more collagen back in our skin, right? Well, physiologically speaking, and with what we know about metabolism, that logic doesn't really make sense because when you eat collagen, your body breaks it down into amino acids, and then you get amino acids in your blood. You don't actually have collagen floating around for your body to use. It gets broken down. But there are some studies suggesting that collagen supplements can help with skin aging. So I looked at these studies in detail and I got into them and read them. And I found that interestingly, over and over and over, the studies that find benefits of collagen are looking at very specific branded collagen supplements, which is pretty rare in studies unless they are funded or sponsored by the manufacturer. And lo and behold, the vast majority of these studies had no conflict of interest statements. So usually, Pretty much every paper is supposed to have a conflict of interest statement where the authors state that they are not sponsored or funded by anything that is related to the outcome of the research. But that was conspicuously absent in these papers, except for a few that did have a conflict of interest statement that directly stated that they were in fact sponsored by some collagen manufacturer. So the combination of naming a very specific product that these researchers got for free, along with a lack of conflict of interest statement or a conflict of interest statement directly confirming that they were sponsored does suggest to me that all, if not the vast majority of these studies have been sponsored by industry. So 
To me, that kind of says we probably can't trust them, but ultimately the jury is still out on whether taking collagen can somehow help with skin just by providing the amino acids or something like that, I guess would have to be the mechanism. But ultimately you can get all of these same amino acids just by eating protein in your diet. You don't even have to eat a complete protein at each meal, just eat normal varied foods throughout the day, could be all plant-based, you would still be fine at getting enough protein. And since I've already gotten questions and will probably continue to get questions about what I do, I'll just go ahead and address it now. So I have a very minimal skincare routine. It will probably horrify some of you. I only wash my face in the shower, which is either every night or every other night, if I haven't exercised or anything. And since I don't wear makeup, I like never put makeup on my skin and only do these tiny little silly eyeliner things for videos because I just wanna keep it consistent over the years. I don't use a cleanser. I just put on moisturizer after my showers and then unocclusive on top of that. And then in the morning, I will use a moisturizer sunscreen. So I will link what I use below. They are paraben free, which is important to me for reasons that I could talk about in another episode if you're interested in parabens and all that controversy. But yeah, so if you have any products that you have found or find in the future that have vitamin C and niacinamide and vitamin E that do not have parabens, please tell me about them because <laughs> I wanna keep experimenting and adding more things to my routine. And as I said, I have not used retinol or tretinoin or any of those things before, but if I ever do, I will try to remember, chances are low, but I will try to remember if I start using in the winter to put the link in the description below. But you can always ask for an update in the winter if you are really curious about what I end up using. If you found this video helpful or interesting and want to support me in making these videos, then consider heading on over to my Patreon where there's bonus content, the ability to make research requests and Q and A's and all that which is linked in the description below, or my GoFundMe, which is for one-time donations if you're feeling very altruistic and generous. That is also linked in the description below. I really appreciate each and every one of you who supports me here, whether it's through your kind comments or through your GoFundMe or Patreon support. It really means a lot to me and helps keep me going with making these videos. And if you like this video, please like it and share it so that other people can get this information and stop spending money on skincare ingredients that don't do anything and instead buy things that can actually help with anti-aging. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell below to stay up to date on all this science. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.